Perfect. This sucks. I'm gonna show you how to stop doing it. So here I got a couple of pieces of 20 gauge, which is super thin stuff. That's why it burns through so easily with the MIG welder. And this is probably about the thickness you'd run into on like a body panel on a car or something. So today I'm just gonna go over a couple of ways to stop burning through and make your sheet metal welds look just as good as your welds on any other material. First tip is make sure both surfaces are clean. Now these were clean before I cut them up, but in some cases you might have dirty metal or you might be working with rusty metal that you need to just like just kind of recycling scrap. Make sure that that's clean because having that clean is going to mean you can run a lot lower settings and still get good fusion, which is going to prevent burn throughs. Now the next tip or advice I have is to have a backing plate. Now that's not always applicable, but if you can say like on an old car, if you could take the fender off. But a piece of aluminum works really, really well. In this case, um, I'm going to just be using the back of the table, but if you have like a block of aluminum or something to stick the pieces on, that's going to help transfer the heat away from it a lot better, and that's also going to prevent burn throughs. Now, the next tip I have for you is about movement speed and pattern. Now, this is kind of a big deal because you're going to be moving significantly faster with thin metal than you ever would with thick metal. Thick metal, you're going to be going low and slow. You really want to make sure you give that weld time to heat up to where you're going and penetrate. And on the thin metal, there's really not much there that as soon as you strike that arc, you're almost already getting fusion. You just kind of got to have it there for just a second, keep removing. So um, you're going to be moving significantly faster with the thin metal and the pattern is not super important. I prefer a whip and pause with kind of maybe a hybrid with a little bit of circles, but so here's three different little welds that I did, and um, I think they're kind of a good opportunity to show you how to diagnose slash inspect your own weld. So this one is what I would call a good weld. It's got even heat distribution on both sides. You can tell because of the discoloration and the weld is even. Um, this one here is too slow of movement speed. Now the settings were actually the same. You could tell if you didn't know because the heat marks are roughly the same and they're not like huge. And the burn through is fairly consistent. Whereas this one here, it's a massive heat mark. I tried to patch it as best as I could with a bunch of tacks, but you could still see those are burned through and it would have been a pain in the butt to continue welding like that. That's basically a giveaway that you have your settings up too high. So this is too slow, that's too hot. So, you know, you wanna be just right. Now the last little tip I have is practice on a not important piece. These are all the welds I did. Um, some of them were featured in the video, some of them weren't. I think quite a few of them were, but the point is I had to practice to get the settings right before I got to the, what I would call optimal settings for what I was trying to do here. So just don't be afraid to practice on scrap pieces. In this case, they were all kind of scrap pieces, but that's a very important thing to do. Your first weld on these settings or to find the settings should not be on the actual work piece that you're gonna be working on or the finished piece or whatever it is. Find a piece of scrap, buy extra material that's the same thickness and figure out the settings first before you do anything. Now the settings I used for this for the 20 gauge specifically were 13.2 volts and 112 on the wire speed which is inches per minute so if anybody's wondering and they have this exact machine that's the settings for that. Other than that just give it a try and do a lot of practice that's the only way to get better at this stuff. Um, if this video did help you out and you want to implement some of these tips please consider liking and subscribing. Um, I do videos like this pretty often and uh, other than that I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day. God bless.